What's up guys, it's your boy Mike, Hawk Crypto Mining, and in today's video, we're gonna compare the Titan V with the Radeon 7 and see which performs better on Dynex, who has the better efficiency. Max Voltage is gonna be joining me here shortly, so let's roll the intro, let's roll that ad, let's get to it. Are high energy rates cutting into your crypto mining profits? Introducing Terra Hosting, your solution for first class, hassle free crypto mining. At Terra Hosting, we specialize in hosting services tailored for GPUs, ASICs, and AI machine learning. Say goodbye to skyrocketing electricity bills and noisy heat producing hardware. Our unique service offering combines low electric rates with a community blockchain-oriented data center while ensuring your equipment stays safe and secure. With Terra Hosting, you simply set it and forget it. Contact us today to learn more and get answers to all your questions. Terra Hosting. Trust as a service. Welcome back, guys. I have the general with me, Mr. Max Voltage. I am wearing a flannel for tradition. Max, what's going on, man? How are you? I'm doing good. So I'm excited to test this Titan V. I know I brought it up a couple times on live streams, so everyone's asking me questions. I really want to see how this compares to the Radeon 7 because it's actually two years older than the Radeon 7, but it's got the same memory and a similar bus width. So I want to see how it performs. What do you think is going to happen? I, I'm not actually sure. I don't know how much NVIDIA actually has everything locked down on it. So right. curious to see how we can clock both the memory and uh, uh, and the core and see what we can come up with. Just so you guys know, Max has access to my rig at home. So he's going to be messing with the overclocks. I'm going to be watching him do it. We're going to pull up some information first before we dive into it. So let's do that. Okay, guys. So we have the Titan V pulled up here on Tech Power Up. Uh, very interesting to look at. Uh, HBM2 memory, 3072 bit bus. I mean, Max, what do you think here? I mean, this was obviously before Nvidia nerfed these cards, right? Well, a couple of things to keep in mind. One is this is a workstation card. This was never a consumer grade card. Right. So that's definitely part of it. But the other part of it is, is that the technology has changed. So NVIDIA is in this as a business. Right. So they're going to provide a certain amount of increased performance generation to generation and do it in a as cost efficient manner as they can. So if that means reducing the bus width to do that, to do it in an efficient where they can make more money they're going to do that right so hbm2 technology is expensive and that's right. why they went away from it now looking at the 4090 here i get it this is a consumer grade card but this is arguably the most powerful gpu ever made i mean from the consumer level it is i mean what do you think i mean look at this bus with i mean i guess the i'm guessing the h100s and all those have a wider bus because they're workstation cards but you know in comparison to these two cards now I really want to take a look because the stats are actually pretty impressive on the Titan V for being a six-year-old card. The FP64 is 7.4 teraflops. It's a lot, you know, and the, mm -hmm. but the FP32 float is 14.9. In comparison to the 4090, if we bring it back up here, you know, the FP64 is in the gigaflops, you know what I mean? But the FP32 is 82 teraflops. So I know this has something to do with the compute, I know a lot of uh, applications are using FP32. So I guess that's what matters in this situation because I don't think anyone's using FP64 right now, at least not in the AI or machine learning world right now, as far as I know. I mean, unless you know something, I don't, I'm not really sure. Oh, but me. So just as a quick comparison now, we are comparing this card more to the Radeon 7. So we are comparing this card to the Radeon 7 now the radeon 7 has the same memory type it's got more memory on it and the bus width is about a thousand a little bit over a thousand more bits on it so very interesting to see uh where the radeon 7 sits uh if you look on this comparison here it looks like it puts it right underneath the titan x pascal it's going to be interesting to compare the two i mean fp64 3.3 teraflops fp32 13.4 so that the titan's beating it in that perspective right again but we're comparing a workstation card to a 
consumer card. But I mean, I, I picked up this Titan V for under $500. So again, a six year old card held its value pretty well, but I think it would do pretty good. So we're gonna test it on Dynex. We're gonna see what it does and let's see if we can compare it and get it close or even better than the Radeon 7. Let's get to it. So obviously this is where we have it at stock. It is interesting to see how the power varies a lot. Right. Um, we've seen it as high as about 120. We've seen it as low as like 70 something. So I am curious to see what we'll be able to do with the efficiency of this once we uh, put a power limit on it, and seeing how low we can put that power limit while also overclocking it. The Kila hash is not really moving. The hash rate is not really moving too much. It's staying at that 4.7 mark. But you're right, the power is jumping around a lot. And the associate efficiency, I mean, right now we're seeing 53 on the efficiency, but then move up two lines, it says 45. We want to compare more efficiency than we want to do hash rate, right? We want to see which one is more efficient. And right now, with the way this is jumping around, it looks like the Radeon 7 is winning at this moment. So um, it'll be interesting. Now, what overclocks did you set on this, Max? So right now, like I said, this is stock. It's stock. So okay, nothing. Next thing I'm going to do. So one of the things I did find out as I was playing with this is it was not accepting a memory uh, underclock or you know a negative uh, clock right. or offset. Right. So really nothing we can do there. I'm not sure if it's uh, the driver. We did update the driver to the latest. Not that it probably needed to since this is a six year old card or right. seven year old card. Right. But uh, but yeah. So uh, unfortunately, we won't be able to really do anything with that. But we will be able to do the core. Um, I did take it up to 250 earlier. That did crash the card. Okay. Let's move it up to 200. Now, obviously with these cards uh, for everybody watching, we don't use a core lock. We're doing strictly core offset because it's an older card and a memory offset, right? So you'll notice here in just a second, it should, core clock should go up to like 1530. All right, so there it is, 1530 on the core clock. Uh, powers at 115 efficiency did drop a little bit but let's give it a chance to reset here yeah it does adjust uh, relatively slowly as far as the hash rate i don't know if it's how they average or if it's the actual hash rate takes that long right. all depends every every miner does things a little bit differently when it comes to actually displaying the actual hash rate now we are using the latest version of one zero miner just so everybody is aware so it looks like the efficiency just went up to 48.58 powers at 100 but it's been bouncing around so we'll give it another minute here yeah if we ended up at 4.87 at 100 watts at like between 47 and 48 hash per watt that'd be pretty amazing it's interesting because a lot of these old cards are still available in mass numbers right and it looks like it's performing better than a 4090 at this point. Would you say that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, I forget what the actual 4090 number was. Let me look that real. It was 3.9 kilo hash. Oh, that's right. Yeah, that's right. correct. Yeah, I'm sure it was running definitely higher power than this. Right. Okay, so it looks like SRB does not like uh, the Titan V. It says algorithm Dynex not supported on GPU zero. Uh, that's weird. Not surprised, SRB, although is good in most cases, is really hard to get stable and had a lot of issues in my opinion. So yeah, so it doesn't work with SRB. Okay, so we're back on one zero minor. We're gonna power limit to 100 watts and we're gonna see exactly how this reacts. We could get better efficiency. So let's see what the best settings are. Looks like we're 4.45 at 48.8 on the efficiency power at 91 watts. That's not bad as far as efficiency is concerned. Yeah, let's see how consistent it is though. Okay, slight increase, four and a half at 95 watts. The other thing to note is the decrease in temperature as well. Right. Obviously we can reduce the fan speed. In fact, I'm gonna do that. All right, so it looks like we got it up to 49 on the efficiency, 4.3 kilo hash, 87 watts, 60% on the fan speed, saving a little power there, which is important. Uh, looks like the core clock's 922 megahertz and got the memory clock at 850 megahertz. So let's see where it goes. All right, so it looks like we hit over that 50% mark, 4.31 kilo hash at 50.72 efficiency at 85 watts, core clock 1200, memory clock 850. But it does look like it's jumping up and down. So it's hovering around that 50% mark. All right, so look, 4.69 kilo hash at 57 on the efficiency, 81 on the power. 
that's very interesting let's see if it holds though because it's been jumping around a little bit but it looks like it is hovering right around the same efficiency so the other thing is the temperature will come down which should help a little bit with the hash rate all right so we're at four and a half kilo hash 49 on the efficiency 92 on the power clocks have stayed the same looks like it's starting to level out a little bit the idea that i wanted to convey to everybody was that you don't need to purchase brand new cards to get maximum efficiency 30 series will do well and now we have this old workstation card that is actually performing pretty decent for its age and what it costs i mean under 500 dollars you can get this card for and it's doing very well right compared to a two thousand dollar 4090 agreed all right, guys, so on Dynex, it looks like the Titan V does perform well. I am concerned about the power surges, though, here, Max. Like, it's going up, it's going down. It doesn't seem very level. Uh, but the main thing here is I don't want you guys to be fooled. You don't have to purchase these high-level cards to get good hash rate. I mean, this is an old workstation card. And, I mean, Max, compared to the Radeon 7, where would you place the Titan? Would you place it close to or right at the same level as far as efficiency goes? i put it at right at the same level. Uh, good thing about the Titan V is I, I think I'd feel a lot better about uh, it actually lasting longer. Right. Uh, Radeon 7s can be very temperamental. So, yeah, if you're kind of trying to figure out which way you're going to go, there's probably even a higher... Uh, amount available of the titan v than there is of the radian sevens as well i want everybody to understand that putting this stuff together is just to benefit you guys so we do the testing for you so you don't have to go and spend all this crazy money trying to find things out so i really hope you guys enjoy the video max thank you so much for coming uh, on the show with me today please subscribe to max voltage hit that like button hit the subscribe button and i'm going to see you guys on the next video hawk is out take care guys